Hi there, this is David, and today we're going to be discussing one of the most iconic characters in the entire Final Fantasy series, Sid. The old man has appeared in every single Final Fantasy game except for the first one, but he was later retconned in. While the vast majority of the games are not connected by their stories or worlds, they do share some similarities, such as Chocobos, Moogles, Airships, Crystals, and of course the iconic Sid. Sometimes he joins the party, sometimes he helps out with the airships, and sometimes he's the bad guy, but then other times he just wants you to drink your damn tea. So sit back, relax, have some tea, and let's rank the top 10 best Sids in the Final Fantasy series. Number 10, Sid Previa of Final Fantasy V. Sid and Mid are two parts of the same whole in this criminally underrated entry to the series. When you first meet him in Karnak, he helps the party escape from jail, but then he falls into a funk after the explosion of the fire crystal and only his grandson Mid can get him out of it. As the smartest man in existence, Sid designed and came up with the technology to extract more powers from the crystals. Then he helps you out with redesigning your airship in order to reach the floating fortress. He helps you out so much, but I think it's because of guilt, since he is the reason why the crystals began to shatter in the first place. The poor guy is just trying to right his wrongs, the only way that he knows how to, by using his brain. Number 9, Sid of Final Fantasy X. For the most part, all the Sids in the Final Fantasy universes are obsessed with engineering, technology, and airships. So it should come as no surprise that Sid is a member of the Albed race, a people who defy the teachings of Yevon and devote their lives to understanding and developing Machina. Because of this, they are shunned and universally hated by the rest of the inhabitants of Spira. And Sid, the leader of the entire group and father of Riku, is the most hated of them all. It's only because of him and his stubborn refusal to bend to Yevon that he's able to help the team out by captaining the airship that Titus uses to save Spira and defeat Sin once and for all. Number 8, Sid Polandina of Final Fantasy IV. While Sid first appeared as an NPC in the second game, then as a guest character in the third, he's finally a fully-fledged party member in the SNES outing, albeit a terrible one. Sid is a good friend, confidant, and co-worker of Cecil, as he's the lead airship engineer for the Kingdom of Baron. He's also one of the first to suspect that the king is possessed by Golbez, and then he winds up being jailed for treason after his suspicions are proven true. Upon his rescue, he joins the team, and honestly, the only good thing that he provides is the airship, and then is sacrificed to escape from the Red Wings. Good riddance to him, too. He's pretty much just in the party as a meat shield and nothing more. I ranked him as the worst party member in Final Fantasy IV, and I still stand by that, although he is a pretty cool Sid. Number 7, Sid Fabul of Final Fantasy IX. The PlayStation Sids are all tortured souls. First in 7, he's an alcoholic. Then in 8, the poor guy's married to an evil sorceress. But it seems that Square wasn't done torturing the old bastard because in 9, they made him an adulterer who's again married to a sorceress who turns him into an oglop. But at least he retains his awesome stash. In his quest to become human again, he ends up turning himself into a frog. But it isn't until he reunites with Hilda that she forgives him and then turns him back into a human. However, in the ending, it's shown that he and Hilda are officially back together. What a sweet ending for an iconic couple. Number 6, Sid Kramer of Final Fantasy VIII. More than likely an homage to Robin Williams, this Sid is the headmaster of Balam Garden, where Squall attends and trains to be a full-fledged seed. On the outside looking in, the school looks just like any other prestigious military academy. However, Sid runs it with a darker, more secretive purpose in mind, to save his mind-controlled wife and destroy the sorceress Ultimicia. While Sid's story is directly tied to the main antagonists of the game and really should have been highlighted more, the brain trusts that Square instead decided to focus on the high school romance of Squall and Renoa. How thrilling. It's just yet another horrible design decision in this terrible game. Number 5, Sid Reigns of Final Fantasy XIII. Final Fantasy XIII might have been a poor entry into the series, what with its linearity, overly complex terminology, and complete lack of meaningful side quests. But you gotta give it to them. They had a great Sid. 
At first, Sid fights for the people against the Foul Sea, helping out the group, only for him to be tragically turned into a Lassie himself, where he's forced to carry out the commands of the Foul Sea against his will. But they underestimated Sid's power because he uses his power of anger to screw over the Foul Sea, which then turns him into a Seath, and then Lightning and crew have to tragically defeat him. See what I mean about the ridiculous terminology in this game? Just call them gods, people, and monsters. What's so hard about that? Number 4, Dr. Sidolphus Demon Bufanza of Final Fantasy XII. We've seen some morally ambiguous Sid so far, but it's only in the series' 12th entry that Sid is finally an out-and-out -out villain. You can see where Balthier's looks came from as this super hot daddy is his estranged father, who developed Nethocyte, and his research gave the Empire new weaponry, airships, and military prowess. It's just a shame that his obsession with it eventually caused him to slide into madness. It's actually quite tragic, because like all fathers, Sid only wanted what was best for his son. But as he became more and more unhinged from reality, Balthier knew that he had to escape. And instead of being a respected scientist, he instead became an outlaw sky pirate. And the rest is history. Number 3. Sid Del Norte Marquez of Final Fantasy VI do you guys remember the Curious George books with the man in the yellow suit? Well, that's what our friendly little banana looks like. For the first time, Sid isn't exactly on your side, as he works for the Empire developing the process for infusing humanity with magic. It's because of him that people like Celeste have been infused with that magic, and why Kefka became such a crazy ass. Whenever he realizes the true way of imparting people's magic is to turn the Espers into Magicite, He's thrilled and simultaneously disgusted. It's really not until the end of the world where he watches over Celeste that his true potential is unleashed, because it's only through his death that Celeste gains the willpower to save the world. Number 2. Sid Highwind of Final Fantasy VII The vast majority of all the Sids are old men. There's no getting around that. But they're still optimistic, cheery, and nice. But not this Sid. He's a crotchety old bitch, a man after my own heart. Unlike the other Sids, his dreams were never actually successful. All the other ones were world-renowned, accomplished scientists. But Sid failed at his goal of becoming the first man in outer space. And as such, he's become an alcoholic, chain-smoking, and somewhat abusive shadow of himself. As one of the few Sids that actually joins your party, he doesn't fight like an engineer. Instead, he's much more akin to a dragoon jumping into the air and attacking with spears. All I know is, I know who he can thrust his spear into. And number one, Thundercock Sid of Final Fantasy Tactics. Final Fantasy Tactics is one of my absolute favorite games of all time, and I've played through it countless times. However, it was only the first time that I played through the game that I actually used all the special guest characters. Otherwise, I used generics and I made challenges, because all the named characters make it so exponentially easier, especially Sidolphus or Landu. He has access to all of the extremely overpowered sword skills in the game, which are otherwise then given to various guest characters, such as Agrius and Gafgarion. Then, his stat growth is through the roof. Even Mastermind Delita knows that he is no match for his power, so he works behind the scenes, ensuring that Sid sticks it out and remains with Ramza so he can fulfill the goal that Delita himself can't. Well, that's it for the top 10 best Final Fantasy Sids. Who are your favorite Sids and why? Let me know in the comments. And if you like this video and wanted to hear on the channel, please consider supporting me on Patreon, heading on over to Twitch for some streaming fun, or joining the Discord to chat and hang out. The links to them can be found in the video description. This has been David. If you like this, please like, comment, and subscribe, and have a good day.